The Civil Rights Movement really died on April 4th, 1968. New life was breathed into it in 1984, but it still wasn't a civil rights movement. The LA riots of 1992, the Million Man March, the Million Women March, neither really had legs. And then, of course, on this day, we gather because we have chosen hope over fear. That didn't constitute a civil rights movement either. The contemporary civil rights movement unfolded directly in response to the murder of Trayvon Martin. Sanford Police Department, lines being recorded by Sean. Hey, we've had some break-ins in my neighborhood, and there's a real suspicious guy. This guy looks like he's up to no good, or he's on drugs or something. He looks black. Did you see what he was wearing? A dark hoodie, like a gray hoodie, and he's got something in his hands. I don't know what his deal is. These assholes, they always get away. Shit, he's running. Are you following him? Yeah. Okay, we don't need you to do that. 911, do you need police, fire, medical? Um, maybe both. I'm not sure. There's just someone screaming outside. All right, what is your... <laughs> well, my first response to the news of Trayvon Martin's death was as a parent. It's the story that's ignited fierce passions across the nation. The thing we fear most. The shooting death of a black youth in Florida sent out new shockwaves today. Then, when you found out the circumstances, uh, I responded specifically as a black parent and as a black man. You know, if I had a son, he'd look like Trayvon. I don't know what this child could have done to be safe, except not be black. The idea that this teenager who was walking down the street could be considered so threatening that a private citizen could initiate a confrontation resulting in that teenager's death. He went, simply went to the store and was headed back home. And for somebody to look at him and perceive him to be a burglar, that, that is the problem. How dare they say that this wannabe security guard had the right to, um, based on his imagined threat, kill this guy. President Obama gave that moving response. Uh, I think all of us have to do some soul searching to figure out how does something like this happen. You know, when I saw his photographs, I thought, wow, he looks like Barack. Trayvon Martin looked like I did at the age of 15, 16, 17. There were many times I'd get on the elevator and women would clutch their purse or I'd walk by a car and suddenly you'd hear the locks go down. Uh, and then maybe the only thing that separated us was luck. Come on, put them hands together. Somebody found peace. My heart hurts for my son. Trayvon is my son. Trayvon is your son. What it did was to surface what a lot of African Americans and other people of color in some cases have felt for a long time. We have cried out about this before. Nobody paid attention. Now that you're paying attention, we have to make it known. This happens to us. And, and that, I think, was a galvanizing force in helping to create uh, a broader based movement that we now know as Black Lives Matter. A fight where black lives actually matter, a fight where people are seeing that when black lives matter, all lives will actually matter. One of the most important things maybe that came out of this tragedy was the activation of an entire new generation of civil rights leaders. Uh, it was grassroots, it was empowered by social media, it was participatory. You had young, you had old, you had traditional, you had churches. Trayvon broke through the culture of bringing a movement back. All of a sudden, LeBron James went from being apolitical to making firm, bold political statements. And then Beyonce just wowed the world with her commitment. Uh, members of the jury, have you reached a verdict? We, the jury, find George Zimmerman not guilty. And the six women of the jury say George Zimmerman was acting in self-defense when I he think shot it was Trayvon a fair trial. Of six white women was going to be favorable to When that verdict came in, that verdict said to me, y'all have changed the leaders of the system, but you haven't changed the system. 
I keep thinking, this is the last time. No more murders. It just tears you apart. At that point, not only was I frustrated, as many people were, uh, but you know, despite holding the highest office in the land, the question was, all right, what can I do with this? A young woman named uh, Danielle Gray, a young African-American lawyer, uh, in the midst of a meeting, went off and just jotted down a bunch of ideas, uh, put at the head of the, uh, the list. Uh, Something that we call My Brother's Keep, an initiative to ensure that all young people, but with a particular focus on young men of color, have a chance to go as far as their dreams will take them. Hopefully, the legacy of this tragedy is not just outrage, but something constructive. And you know that that doesn't fill the hole that Trayvon's parents feel. But hopefully it's viewed by them as a testament to the fact that we care and that what happened was unacceptable and that this country can do better. My hope is, is that we look back on what happened with Trayvon and are able to say that uh, that was the start of uh, America looking inward and uh, in fits and starts uh, coming to terms with, uh, with what has always been our original sin.